my name is Joanna Farmer and I'm here at the Googleplex studio to show you how to build your basic wind experiment kit. The first thing you need to do uh, is get into your box and make sure everything is there, all the parts are there, um, and get out your instruction booklet. It'll be a great guide as you go along the way. We're going to start with building the tower and you're going to need a few basic parts. You're going to need the tower base and the tower locking ring, uh, which a lot of people think is missing from the kit, but it's actually found right inside of your tower base. You have three legs and a tower. So what you're going to do first is you're going to insert these legs into the slots on the tower base. Now you have to push down until you hear a snap. And you're going to do that for each of the three legs. Sometimes you have to go off the edge of a table to get it to snap into place. If you ever want to take this apart, you just need to take something hard to push against this like a screwdriver. You can use one of the dowels from your pack. Push in this nodule here and pull it down. The next thing you need to do is take out your tower. Uh, you have to pay close attention to this because there are two distinctly different sides to the tower. There's one side that has not had any work done to it, and then there's one that's been sanded down a little bit. It's a little bit more rounded. If you try to put your locking ring on the side that has not been sanded, it will not go on at all. So if you have that problem, just flip it over, put it on the other side. Now you need to get this to go in as far as you can. If for some reason it's too tight, just take a little piece of sandpaper and sand it down a little bit more and it should slide right on. From this point, you're just going to click, click this into place and there is your basic tower. The next thing you'll need to construct is the nacelle of the turbine. It fits together like a puzzle. It snaps into place. You can't get this one wrong because it has an opening on one end and it's closed on the other end where it fits together nicely. Once you get this pushed together, you're going to take a Phillips screwdriver and six of your small screws. And there are six holes in the nacelle where you will need to put these screws. There's one on the top and on the bottom of both sides. There's also some here in the center. Do not put a screw into this top portion yet. You will use that later. When you put the screws in, make sure that you don't over tighten them. You just need them to be snug. If you tighten, tighten them too much, you will strip the plastic out and it will not screw in. So just make sure you get it kind of snug. Once you get these pieces together, you should never have to take them back apart. So the good news is, is you won't have to do this every time that you use your turbine. Once you get all six screws in, then you're going to start mounting the motor for this nacelle. You will need your two motor mounts that are, have a concave side on both of these. You will need your two hex bolts as well as four hex nuts and two wing nuts. And what you're going to do with these is you're going to take a hex nut and you're going to put it on all the way up to about an inch from the top. So you just want to roll it all the way up there fairly close to the top. And you want to do the same thing for this one. They don't have to be exact. You don't need to measure, just something close, because you're going to be able to adjust these as you go. Okay, once you get your hex bolts on, you're going to place them in to the grooves here on the nacelle. And then you're going to slide these up so that the bolt is up against the plastic. 
From there, you're going to put your motor mounts on the bolts with the concave side facing down on the top one. I'm going to slide that on as far up as you can. It should look like this. And then you're going to make sure on your other mount that the concave side is facing up towards the other one. So your concave side should face each other. The second one's a little trickier to get on. But you're going to slide that on as well. So at this point, you should have your two hex nuts and your motor mounts. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take hex nuts and you're just going to place these on as well. Yeah. And you're not going to pull, put them all the way up to the plastic, you're just going to put them on a little ways. Okay, at that point, you should be able to push your bolts down into the grooves down below on your nacelle. So it should look something like this at this point. The next thing we're going to do is put our wing nuts here on the bottom. And one of the tricks you can do here is you can hold your wing nut in place and kind of turn your bolt so that it stays in place. So you just hold your wing nut in place and turn the bolt. And they don't have to be super tight, they just have to be on there helps keep these bolts in place. Okay, so now you have your nacelle with your motor mount installed. The next thing you're going to do is actually install the motor. Now when you're using your motor, you need to always make sure that this part's untangled and make sure that you don't pull very hard on the backs of these wires. Uh, they are re reinforced here with a little extra plastic, but if you pull these wires out, then your motor is ruined. So make sure you're real careful not to put any pressure on these wires. You're going to open your motor mount up. Again, you kind of have to wiggle it a little bit. You're going to take the ends of your wires, place them into the center of the motor mount, and then just out through the side here. And you can just kind of pull them through. Remember, don't put a lot of pressure on these wires here. Don't put a lot of force on these wires. Take this motor and you're going to set it in between your motor mounts. At this point, you can slide your bottom brace up so that it's up against the motor. And then just move your hex nuts up to kind of help hold it in place. At this point, you have your motor installed. The next thing we're going to add is our gears. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your eight tooth pinion gear, which is your smallest gear, and right here directly on the motor, there's a hole in the middle of the pinion gear. You're going to put this pinion gear, just going to push it on. It's not going to go all the way on, just push it on a little ways as far as it goes. And you have your pinion gear installed. The next thing you need to do is take your hex shaft, which is right here, and you're going to put it in through the hole here at the top. Now, you can always tell the top here because this is the one that has the hole, the bottom is not going to have the hole. You're going to take your hex, hex shaft and you're going to place it through the hole. You kind of have to wiggle it through, and you're going to make sure that your quick connect is on the opposite side of your gear. Another thing that you may want to do is you may want to put on a, these are locking hex nuts that will help keep it in place. Uh, this is not something that the directions tell you to do, but that you can do if you want to keep it uh, in place a little bit better. Here. On this back side, you do want to use one of these hex nuts and you're going to place it on the other side of the shaft. It's just going to slide on and there's a little friction. Just kind of work with it. Then you're going to take your 32 tooth gear and you're going to slide it on. 
You're going to want to make sure that the round opening, which matches up with this hex lock, goes on and they match up. This is going to hold this gear in place so that it can't slide. The next thing you need to make sure of is that your gears line up. You want to make sure that they're setting directly above each other. You don't want them to be out too far and you don't want it to be in too far. So this is where this other uh, hex nut comes into place. You can kind of move it to make these line up. So right now, this gear is lined up with this gear directly above it and it can't move. Now we can see that the pinion gear is not touching the 32 tooth gear and we need that to happen. So what you're going to do is you're going to adjust these hex nuts just by turning them and we're going to raise this motor up so that these two gears match up. This takes a little playing with. Once you get your top ones loosened, you can start tightening up the bottom ones a little on each side to tighten your motor back up into the mount. And it will keep raising it up. And you need to keep doing that. You may have to do it a couple times until your gears match up. Now, you don't want them to be super tight against each other because that would cause too much friction between the two blades and it'll cause your turbine to stop but you want them to be close enough that one can turn the other. So you want to keep working on this until you get your gears completely lined up and all your hex nuts tightened. The other way you can adjust is you can always move your motor in or out just a little bit in the brace to kind of make those final calibrations. So what we have now is we have a shaft here that's coming through your 32 gear and it's rolling your eight gear. So if you can see one is moving the other, it's not super tight and it moves freely. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your tower and you're going to install your nacelle on the tower. It just slides right on. Once you do this, I suggest wrapping this cord around the tower so that it doesn't get trapped in any blades and then adding a small piece of duct tape to it to help hold it in place. Once you've done this, you've pretty much set up your turbine. If you plan on leaving it in this fashion through the school year to store it, that's great. You can take at that point and put a little screw in here or in here, one of these remaining small silver screws, and screw it in so that it doesn't move on this pole. If you're planning on taking it apart, I recommend that you just leave it as is. It's not going to hurt anything if it turns a little during your uh, experiments. Just make sure, once again, that your wires don't get in a bind back here and start pulling away from the motor. You can always add an extra little piece of tape right here to ensure that they're not being pulled on. As for blade assembly, there's some different products that you can use. In your kit, it comes with balsa wood and a chip board. Now, these boards uh, you can find just about anywhere. A lot of times this board is used uh, from your art teachers to do some mattings of their uh, artwork in their classroom. So you can always find scraps there. Uh, the balsa wood, you can find at any of the hobby stores. I will say that this is fairly expensive. Um, so I always like to save this for when the students get to their final production of their blades or if it's going to a contest because this works just fine and it's a lot cheaper. The other thing you can do if, you're, if you like to recycle, um, anytime an election is happening, they a lot of times will print their election signs on this corrugated plastic. And it's also very thick, it's lightweight, and it also makes great blades. The other thing about the corrugated plastic that's nice is that one way that you can get these blades onto these dowels is if you just simply sharpen this in a pencil sharpener, and then you can stick it right in the end and push it in one of the areas 
where the plastic is open, and then you have your blade installed and you didn't need to use any glue. So that would save you some time. But pretty much you can make blades out of anything. I always have my students draw it out on paper first to get their final design. And then I move up to maybe a poster board or something that is firm but not super flexible. Um, but you want it to be light and then they can use that. Another way that you can put these dowels onto your board is you can simply use wood glue or hot glue. Elmer's glue doesn't hold up very well, so I don't suggest that, but if you do use a wood glue or um, hot glue, to me, works the best. It just depends on how much you trust your students to use what type of material. So that's how you would attach your blades. Once you get your blades attached and you have your blade ready to go, I'm going to go back to the one I use the pencil sharpener on because that's the easiest way. You're going to put these blades in your hub. Now, you should have more than one classroom set. So even if you don't have all your towers built and you just want to test on one a tower, what you can do is get your extra hubs and have, one, have several groups of students getting their blades ready to go in these hubs prior to their turn to test. So what you're going to do is you're going to unscrew this a little bit and there's going to come a space here. And you're just simply going to stick your dowels in. Now you want to put your first one in and get it just tight enough that you can bring it in and out without having to tighten or loosen it any. You're going to go ahead and have the students put all their blades in that they're going to use. They can use two blades, three blades, four blades, six blades, up to 12 blades in these. So you want to make sure that they have the amount of blades they want in here. Once they get them all in there, then they can tighten it up, not super tight because once again, these metal screws will strip out the plastic. You just want it snug. They're not going to come out. And that way you can have the students go ahead and get their blades ready. And if you have several groups doing this, then when the first group goes to test, all you have to do, you have your quick connect hub right here, and this hub will fit right in here. There's a little groove you need to line up. and it snaps on. The students can test at this point to see if their turbine's going to work. All you need to do is set a fan up, any kind of household fan will work, and they can test their blades. Now, once the first group's finished, they can just simply pull their hub off and the next group can put their hub on. It'll keep things moving a little faster in the classroom. And then the next group can start using the extra hub to get their blades together. There is a screw up here on this quick connect that you can screw in if this isn't staying on. 90% of the time this will stay on without having to use that. So this is just adds a little more time to it. If you're going to leave this hub on all the time, then you could go ahead and screw it in, but usually you won't even need that. Once you get ready to test, and you have your blades on. There's a couple different things you can do to see if your turbine is actually making some energy. So we have to see if that wind energy is actually being converted over into electrical energy. And the way we do that is they sent some alligator clips in your box. There should be a red one and a black one. And I always tell the kids, just for future reference, match your colors. And what you're going to do is you can slide these down a little bit so that you can get a good grip on the clip. And you're just going to clip it on to the wire. Now, you can go ahead, if there's not enough wire showing, and just pull off this excess plastic. It's real easy to pull off um, so that you can get to it. Or you can just leave it on. It will work. So you just want to click your, put your red to your red, your black to your black. And then there's several ways that you can test. Uh, they come with three different light bulbs, red, blue, and green. They all take the same amount of power to turn them on. Uh, I think it's one and a half volts. So it doesn't matter which color you use, it's just your choice. Once again, you're going to do red to red, black to black. 
just to get them in good habit of that. You want to make sure it's got a nice connection. Okay, once they're testing their blades, and this is turning, this is going to light up based on how much electricity is going through it. Now, normally we want their blades to turn in a clockwise in a clockwise direction uh, is ideal because that means that all of our wires are hooked up properly. If for some reason they have their blades on and this isn't lighting up, then they probably have their blades at a way that's making it go counterclockwise. And in that case, all you would do is switch your black and red ends down here. So it's a simple fix. The other way you can test to see if you're getting any power is to take your light off and hook these up to your power output board that comes with your kit. Now, on this one, these attach a little different. Um, for the most part, for the first few labs that you do, you're only going to use these top two holes where the negative and the positive is. Uh, if you're going in a clockwise direction with your blades, you're going to have black is negative, and it's going to click right into the holes on this board. And red is positive. Once again, you just click it in to the holes on the board. Now, what this will do as it's turning, as this is converting that energy, it's going to start lighting up across here. If we get a half a volt of energy, the first light will light up. If we keep going and getting more and more energy produced, then they'll get up to five volts that it'll show on this board. So the kids are going to want to see how many lights they can light up across this board. If for some reason there are no lights going across this line, but you're getting a red light at the top, once again, that just means we have our polarity reversed. Either the kids are have their blades going the other direction, which is no problem. All you do is just switch these two around and put your red to your negative. Just means our polarity is reversed. So the first thing you ever want to do if you're not getting a light, if you're not getting lights on this, is just reverse your polarity. So just switch your red and your black cords around. Okay, there are a couple things you can do to check if your turbine is not turning at all. First of all would be the blades. A lot of times students want to put blades on and they put them in just any direction on there. And if they're going opposite directions, then when the wind hits them, they'll cause the turbine to stop. So the first thing they can do is check the pitch of their blades or the angle of their blades and make sure that they're all turned the same direction. Sometimes kids want to turn them all the way to the side. That also, the wind's just going to go straight through and it's not going to turn the turbine. So then again, you want to check and check the angle of their pitch. These are made with this nice little protractor here that tells us our angles. If the kids have their blade in and they want to check that, there is a little device in here, it's yellow. If they set this on their hub and it lines up neatly so that they can't mess that up, they can look at the angle of their blade and say, okay, this is zero, so I want to turn them all to negative 40, or I want to turn them all this direction to 40. So they can go through and check to see if all their blades are about the same pitch. If they're all at the same angle, they're going to do better on their energy output than if they're all at different angles. The next thing that we see teachers having a difficulty with with these kids is when we're trying to do weightlifting versus power output. So on the weightlifting, your turbine's set up similar, except for we just kind of drop out our gears. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our nacelle off just so it's easier to see. When we're using the weightlifting section, we're going to want to use the spool, our locking nuts, as well as our cup and string to help lift the weights. 
In this case, what you're going to do is you're going to remove your 32 tooth gear. So you've removed that gear. You're going to slide your spool on and it's going to actually lock on to this hex nut that's right here, this locking nut. And you're going to slide the other one on facing it and it'll also go into the end. That's going to lock this spool in place for you. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to take your string and you're going to tie it onto your spool. Just a nice little knot. And then the important part is, is you need to take a little piece of tape and tape that string into place. It doesn't have to be a very big piece. Just tape that string into place so it can't slide around on that spool. When you put this back on your tower, once again, you have a place for your blades to turn. It's going to turn this spool and it's going to raise this whatever you have hooked to the string. Now, in order to attach it to the cup, the best way to attach it to the cup is to slide it through the outside of one side, back across, and then make a little knot here in the middle. You can put a slip knot in that you can undo later, or you can just tie it off and cut the string when you're done. So it's going to look something like that. What you do first with the kids is have them test their turbine, their blades, and you want to make sure it's wrapping around the spool. And you want to have them see if they can lift this bucket with their blades. So as the blades turn, this bucket will raise. If that works, then what you're going to want to do is take the washers that come with it and start adding them to them slowly. So maybe you want to try five washers first and see if their blades can lift that. A lot of times, students will not be able to lift this at all or very little at first because what they have done is they've probably thought, well, when I see a turbine out in the field, it has three blades. So I like the idea of three blades. So I'm going to use three blades. That's great when it comes time to check for energy output. However, when we want to lift something, we're going to have to add more blades because we're going to need more torque. We're going to have to be able to lift this up. So if you have students that can't get this to lift, you might give them the hint of adding more blades. That's usually the first thing they can do. The other thing they can do is when they do put these on their hub, if they have a lot of space between their blade and their hub, then there's a lot of free wind going through here that nothing's happening with. So they may have to cut down their dowel or put this on farther onto the board and so that there's less than an inch between here and the blade. So that will help as well. So the key is on lifting this, you want to make sure that you have a little piece of tape on this spool so that the string doesn't want to slide. And when it is lifting, you want to make sure that the string is going around the spool. And you can just kind of help it as it goes. And it'll go pretty fast for most of them once they get going. And you'll be surprised how many washers they can put in here. So you'll have kids that actually can do all of the washers by the time you're finished. So that's basically the steps for installing both for the constructing the energy output and the lifting for the turbine kit.